Private money is so easy to attract for your real estate deals when you know where to find it and what to say to the private lenders. Well, my guest in this episode is a dear friend of mine. All the way back to 2009, we met at a real estate investing conference and we've been best of friends ever since. Well, my guest has raised over $15 million in private money. And just last month alone, he raised $995,000 in new private money all in just one month. Well, my guest is Jim Zaspel. In this episode, Jim is going to share where he finds his private lenders, what he says to the private lenders, and how it is that his private lenders always chase him to fund his deals instead of him chasing the lenders. So if you want to hear how you can have private money chasing you, don't miss a second of this episode. Let's dive in right now. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, Jim, how in the world did you raise a million dollars in private money just last month? Jay, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, thanks again for having me here today. Uh, super, I've learned so much from you over the years on how to raise private money. And uh, at any given time, we have between 15 and $20 million of private money deployed, private or sometimes hard money deployed on deals. But um, you know, I woke up one day, I was like, I, wanna, I, wanna, I need some more private money. I got a bunch of deals closing. And uh, so I think the first step was I decided to, right? It starts with intentionality. And um, then I reached out to some folks who I knew might have money. I reached out to some folks who had already lent me money and got more money from them, right? And then I asked for referrals, right? And so one guy referred in his sister, another one referred in a friend, another one doubled his investment. Then I got a couple of new investors as well. So one I decided to, and next I started picking up the phone and dialing and uh, uh, using your approach. Now, um, well, thank you for the kind words, by the way. Um, so you said you reached out to these folks, so first of all, when you say folks, <laughs> folks, in fact, that sounds like South Southern talk there, but you said you reached out to these folks mm -hmm. raising this million dollars in private money. So it sounds like you weren't reaching out to banks, institutions, hard money lenders for this million dollars. These were like people, right? Individuals, individuals. Had they already loaned you money before or were they new lenders or a mix? So, um, Gina is brand new. She was the sister of one of my existing private lenders. Uh, Carrie, he uh, he doubled his investment, more than doubled his investment. So he he did he did one deal with me, and then I called him and said, "Listen, um, do you want to reinvest?" It was such an awkward conversation, actually. So he's a real he owns a, a local business. He's a real straight to the point kind of guy. And I called him the day after he got his money back from his first deal with me. I said, "Hey, you know, Carrie, just wanted to you know thank you for doing business with with this. Uh, hope it was all that you expected and more." Well, it was, it was about what I expected. So, okay, <laughs> it took me by surprise. I said, "Great." So, well, you know, I uh, you know appreciate the opportunity to do business with you. Would you would you like to do business again? He said, "All right." Like just that, these are like I'm telling you, this is exactly what he said. Then uh, I said, "Great." I said, "Did you want to keep it at a similar amount, or did you uh, did you he invest like one hundred and forty thousand dollars the first time?" I said, "Or did you want to do more?" He said, "Well, between two and three. I said, all right, sounds like two or three hundred thousand, not two or three million, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said all right, sounds good. So, uh, so he started, he was at one hundred and forty thousand, and now he's coming up to two hundred or three hundred thousand. He correct. And uh, so I sent him uh, two deals, uh, the sum of which was three hundred and thirty thousand dollars, uh, and and he, he invested in both of those deals. So he he doubled his investments. So I guess I don't know what is that another one hundred and ninety, right? And then um, Gina was the sister, or still is the sister, of one of my existing private lenders. Uh, this is a guy I've known, the, the guy who referred her in, her brother, brother-in-law, actually, uh, known him for like 10 years. Right? He's a home inspector in the area, and I've just known him, and he, he's a, one of my smaller private lenders. He's a great guy, and uh, we do a deal or two at a time consistently. And then um, another guy used to work for me, actually, part-time, like six years ago. Uh, you probably actually know him. I'll, I'll give you his name offline. but. Uh, um, 
yeah, so it was, I was reaching out to individuals, going through my cell phone, right? And then that, either asking for referrals or asking folks, you know, if they knew somebody who was interested or if they'd like some information. You know, Jim, what you just shared reminds me of a couple of lessons that I've learned over the years since raising money in 2009 is both, actually when you and I started. Um, but one thing your story just reminds me of is, first of all, Every private lender that I've done business with, and I've got 44 of them now uh, investing in our business and loaning us money, every one of them has got more money than they tell you initially always. that they have. Always, always. I think you'll agree with that, right? 100%. And the second lesson that comes to my mind from your story is a close cousin to what you just shared. And that is, here is a tip as to how I easily, effortlessly, not always, but a lot of the times, get more private money pledged to me to use from my existing private lenders. And it's a very, very easy thing. So here's the way it works for me. I'll have private money funding a deal and I'll go to sell it. I'll cash out. Now, I do a lot of substitutions of collateral. Do you do substitutions of collateral with your lenders? I don't. I mean, I, I think you every stinking time I uh, I pay a prepayment penalty, but uh, but I don't. We usually give uh, at least three months of interest, sometimes uh, sometimes four. Every once in a while, six months depends on I don't know whatever variety of factors. Every time I do that, I pay six months of interest in four months. I'm like, I should just be doing substitution of collateral like Jay. <laughs> I don't. Well, so so uh, just to make sure we're on the same page, um, tell me and my listener, what is a substitution of collateral? And then I'll get back to my, my tip about how to always get, not always, but a lot of the times get more private money from your existing lenders. Sure. So you, you got it with private lending. There's like, you know, basically three things involved, right? You've got a deed, you've got a promissory note, and you've got either a deed of trust or mortgage, right? So it's three things. And um, you, the deed, which is the house, you got a promissory notes to promise to pay for the house, right? And then you got the deed of trust, the mortgage in between that connects the two, right? And as uh, so that deed of trust or the mortgage puts the house up as collateral. But once you get a buyer lined up for the underlying asset, the house, the deed, right? And I say, listen, we're going to sell this. And how about we put your mortgage or your deed of trust onto a different asset, a different deed, or against a different property? Did I, did I explain that well? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, like uh, you did. Um, another way to say it is that a substitution of collateral is exactly what it sounds like. So like you just said, I'm not borrowing. I don't think you do. I always collateralize the notes. I don't borrow unsecured money, even though we can legally. Mm -hmm. So I always give the, the uh, lender, the private lender, I always give them a deed of trust or mortgage that backs that note, that backs that money that they're loaning to me. So Let's say I go to sell a house and I want to do a substitution of collateral. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to substitute the collateral. I've got that note that I want to keep in play with that lender and not pay them off. So as long as I've got another property that can collateralize that note or that money that they've loaned to me, then I keep the note going. I keep, you know, they keep earning, they keep earning their money. And then I just back that note with a different property in order to keep them secure, right? So do a lot of that. So back to my tip that I started on a moment ago, and that is how do you, how can you get more private money from existing private lenders? And here it is in a nutshell, I'll go to pay them off. If I'm not substituting the collateral, I'll go to pay them off because I'm, I've sold the property. And now that, that um, private money is paid back to the individual, to the lender. and I call them up and I say, Hey, uh, let's say, Jim, you're my private. I say, Hey, Jim, um, I'm, I'm selling this house. I'm paying off your note of whatever, $200,000. And so you should receive a check in the mail from my real estate attorney within the next week. By the way, Jim, you've got this 150,000 coming back. I assume you want me to put that money back to work for you as soon as possible. And Jim, in all likelihood, you're probably going to answer that question with what? Absolutely. Yep. You want to put it back to work. Then my next question after that is, uh, well, Jim, is there more um, investment capital or retirement funds you've got that you would like to put with that 150 so you can make more money on your money? And when I ask that question, 
probably 50% of the time, at least, they want to add money to it, particularly if they are a newer lender. What's been your experience with that of people like increasing what they started out with? Well, I can tell you that uh, in hearing you talk right now, I uh, I don't ask that question nearly enough, but I'm going to start doing that every single stinking time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm, right? I'm glad I could remind you, you know, of something about private money, Jim, after all those years. And look, you know, I want I want my listener that's tuning in right now to understand this. Jim Zaspel has been one of the dearest friends of mine and my wife, Carol Joy, since February 2009. Right. Yes. You and I met at a, a real estate investing conference in February 2009. And when I was there, I remember like it was yesterday. I know, I didn't know what private money was. I didn't know what private lending was. I didn't know what subject, buying subject to the existing note. I didn't know terms. I didn't know creative financing. For six years, all I knew before that conference was to go to the local bank and borrow money. So what a, what a wake-up call that conference was. Yeah, it was uh, that was something. You know, it's funny. Uh, I remember like you raised was it two million one hundred fifty thousand dollars in ninety days uh, after I, after leaving that conference. Yes, yeah, and um, I was uh, I was slow, and I think like people ask me, like what's what's one thing you wish you'd done differently, right? And there was a, there was an an unnecessary and ill founded awkwardness I had about asking for private money, right? So before you came out with your your scripts and your course, right? And uh, so I was slow to do that. If I had done that a little bit sooner out of the gate, um, yeah, I probably would have been met with more success sooner. And to this day, again, like I think we have $21 million on the streets right now. And uh, to this day, there's still an, an apprehension I, I have. And then I realized every time I pick up the phone, I have yet to have somebody be upset with me or be offended that I asked them if they wanted to invest money. Because what does it mean? It means I think they have money. It's, it's, a, it's a compliment, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. So you said a moment ago that when you first started having conversations with potential private lenders, that you felt awkward. So what do you think made you feel awkward in those initial conversations that you would have? <clears throat> and what breakthrough did you have that changed your mindset about that? Yeah. So two, two answers to the first question, why did I have that awkwardness? I think it was two things. One is I recognized my own inexperience, which, which is a well-founded concern, right? I was uh, 21 or two when I started as young and dumb, right? Now I'm just dumb, not very young. And then uh, the second thing was, um, uh, yeah, I think it's part of a product of our environment, right? That's why I was raised, right? People didn't talk about money a whole lot. And uh, so you talk about money and borrowing money, it was almost like this, you almost felt needy, but like, you, like you've taught me, it's like it's a reposition. The it's, it's an opportunity I'm giving somebody that they wouldn't otherwise have, and uh, that's once I've adjusted my mindset. So what triggered that adjustment in my mindset was um, I don't know, the success stories. My private lenders, they're they're happy. They keep investing the capital. I'm like, are you sure you want to? And after a while, I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. I'm actually doing a huge favor. And um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of houses later, it's uh, it's like I have supreme confidence in my abilities. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes to mindset, like you just alluded to, <clears throat> and, 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 I'll, and I'll admit, I'll confess the same thing. I mean, I remember like yesterday, my very first conversation with uh, my first potential private lender was at church, right? But you know, you know what's funny, Jim? I've never asked anybody for money. That very first private lender, I didn't ask for money. You know what I did? I, I asked for I asked I asked for his help. I asked for his help. I and I'm sure you've heard this story, but it was at church on a Wednesday night, and you know I went up to him before church and I said, "Hey, uh, I'd like to talk to you, you know, confidentially uh, after Bible class tonight." And so after Bible class, we get together, and here's exactly what I said to him. I said, "You know everybody in this town," and he did. He was the original Zenith television dealer. That's prior to Walmart coming to town, right? <clears throat> so he, and he did, he knew everybody in town. He was, you know, steeped in the Rotary Club. I mean, he'd been in community service and church and all this for decades. And I told him, I said, my exact words were, I said, I've now opened up my real estate investing business 
to people that I know and trust and have a relationship with. And I said to him, I said, I need your help. He said, well, what do you need, Brother Jay? I said, well, when you run across somebody that's complaining about the volatility of the stock market or they're complaining about, you know, getting no money at the local bank in a certificate of deposit, would you refer them to me and I'll show them how they can earn insane high rates of return doing business with me and investing in my deals. And of course, we know what, where that conversation went. Well, now he's interested. He wanted to know what the program was. And right there on the spot, he pledged me $250,000 just simply by me asking for his help. Today, you know, when I'm teaching other people how to do this, I call that the indirect method. It's like, how can you be rejected? Like, you know, I hear people all the time say, you know, fear, well, they don't say it, but what they're meaning is fear of rejection, fear of rejection. I'm going, how can you have fear of rejection when there's nothing to reject, right? Yes. Number one, the indirect method, everybody wants to help. We're all created by God wanting to help other people, unless you're just screwed up in the head. God <laughs> created you to help, right? Yep. So when you ask somebody to help, of course they want to help, you know, if they can help, you know, kind of thing. So that's, that's what I call, you know, the indirect uh, approach there. So, so I'm in, so, 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 by, so you know, people ask me all the time with well, Jay, how do you have, and I don't have as much private money as you do, Jim, you're like, you know, I need to just like bow down to you. But I got, you know, I got eight and a half, I got eight and a half million dollars that, you know, in private money that I move around from project to project, but that's pretty good for only 40,000 people in my market yeah. and, and all, and all I need, I mean, I have a problem now. I can't put it all to work. That's my problem, but what a good problem to have. That's a good right? problem. You know, what they, you know what they call that, Jay? Those are what? rich people problems right there. Rich people problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's a right or down. I never heard of the rich people problem. So, yeah. so, so I'm interested. So people say, how do you have the money without asking for it? I don't ask for money. I teach them what private money is. And then, of course, they're chasing me. So, Jim, you know, you were this million. What do you say? I mean, how does your talk? What are your talk off points when you're like beginning a conversation with a new potential private lender, an individual? Of course, we're not talking about banks and all that. We're talking about regular old people like us. Mm -hmm. How do you start a conversation with someone? and? They've never, you've never talked to them about private money, but how does that even start? Sure. So um, I'm trying to think most of my new private lenders, all but one of my new private lenders came as referral. And so the people were kind of warmed up to me and are relatively familiar with the idea. There's one recent private lenders. The guy went from 140 to uh, what was it? 330, uh, $330,000. Um, he's known my parents since they were, in, they were all in college together. Right. So he's, See me uh, come up in the business, and we, I saw him at a church function, and uh, I forget what the function was. And we don't go to church together, but he happened to come to our church that day. And he said, Jim, he said, uh, are you still doing that real estate thing? I said, only about uh, 200 houses this year. He says, okay. He says, um, you said a while back you use investors, right? I said, I do. I said, but I'll tell you what, you know, um, if that's something you want to chat about, you know, I'll give you a call. We can schedule something now. It's not the time or place. So I kind of immediately pushed back a little bit. He said, yeah, yeah, you've got my number. He said, you know, give me a call later this week and we'll schedule time to meet. Right. And um, so it's just I, I'm very slow in my sales cycle, if, if I want to call it a sales cycle. Right. Uh, I'm never asking them, never pitching it. I'm always pushing back to the next meeting. The next meeting is is I learned from you. I've got a, a simple slide deck I go through just some sample deals and frequently asked questions um, that I, that I got from you. I still, still use it. I put in my deals, but I still use your slide deck and, uh, and we go through and I just, my closing question is really simple. Uh, I ask them any questions. They say, no, I said, great. That's what we do. What would you like to do? That's my closing question. What would you like to do? Same thing on a buying houses. What would you like to do? Um, it's a, uh, leaves it open-ended. It's a anti-pressure uh, process. I love it, Jim. You just made, I mean, it's just so um, natural. I mean, the conversation is natural. So starting a conversation, uh, as you were answering the question, I was thinking to myself, well, Jay, how do you start your conversations? And, <laughs> and you know, my favorite, I, I love this question that begins with three words. And it's a, did you know question? Did you know? It's like, everybody wants to be like on the inside. 
And so, Jim, my favorite, like if somebody's, if I've never talked to them about, you know, private money or anything, my favorite conversation starter mm -hmm. is, did you know there's a way people can make unlimited income per year tax free? And of course, they don't know the answer to that question. No. They don't know any kind of way they could earn unlimited money. But just, I didn't say you, I said people. Did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money per year tax free? Of course, they say no. And then it's, a, it's just an easy way to start a conversation about using retirement funds in from self directed IRA, you know, accounts and companies. And, um, and, and so when I asked the question, did you know there's a way people can make unlimited money per year tax free? They say no. And then I'll say, well, let me tell you about Bruce. And then I tell him a story. So, you know, stories. That's sell. What I teach. Yes. Stories teach. You know, I mean, my lands, we learned that from Jesus, right? His, his parables, his teachings were, that's how he taught. He taught by telling a story. Right. And so I said, well, let me tell you about Bruce. And then I tell him about my private lender named Bruce that earned $65,000 from me and my company in one year tax free by using his retirement funds. Well, it was a Roth IRA. That's how sure. he was able to do it. It was a Roth. All the investment is after tax. So all the profit that he makes for the not profit, because I don't pay, I don't share the profit. I just pay private money. All the private money interest that I paid into his retirement account that year was totally tax free. So I tell that story and now the listener is like, what? 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 <laughs> It's like their head is blowing up because, you know, financial advisors has never heard this. No, right. No. And the reason they haven't heard is because like, you know, there's there's like no money in it, you know, for them to know about it. Well, now, Jim, before we started the show, you were telling me a story about this house that you bought on a lake. Uh, I think you're in North Carolina. Uh, you were telling me. And in the and in the process of purchasing this lake house, I love what you told me. You just wrote down one of your goals this year. I'll buy a lake house, and poof, you did. So anyway, and in and purchasing this lake house, you were able to raise even more private money than you had before. Tell me the lake house story. All right, well, so it's a different approach from from my, like my our standard deals, right? And um, you know, it's like sometimes you like you jump out of the airplane, you figure out how to build a parachute on the way down. So, so it's kind of what I did, right? So um, you know, growing up, you know, my family when I was little, like they didn't have two nickels to rub together. Uh, you know, I, we always loved going to lakes, you know, just for the day, or you know, scrounge up some money and, and go for a week. And so I've always loved lake houses. Four years ago, we actually rented a house on Lake Norman in North Carolina. It was a beautiful lake, like 512 miles of shoreline, it's huge. And I loved it. And ever since we've been there, I've had it as like a, I'll call it a back burner goal to, uh, to have a, a lake house in North Carolina. And I had lunch with a, a friend in Florida in May of this year. And he said, Jimmy, said, what are your goals? And I talked a little bit about them, but really there's a, a lack of clarity on, on my part. And he said, Jimmy, said, if you don't have them, like you're not going to hit them. Like you got to get clear. You and your wife, she was there as well. I said, you got to get clear in your goals and you got to write them down, keep them in front of you, you know, every single day. You got to like pursue them. So one of the goals I wrote was have a, a lake house on either Deep Creek Lake, Maryland, or uh, Lake Norman, North Carolina. That's big enough for our entire family with a flat backyard on a relatively quiet cove. That was my goal, right? Um, and it at least fifty percent subsidized, for lack of a better term, uh, by short-term rental income. That was the goal, right? And so I've been writing this down for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden one day, I'm like, what the heck am I waiting for? I'm doing absolutely nothing towards this. So I go on the internet. And, uh, you know, fill out some forms and realtors start calling or whatever. And the first house I looked at um, online, never went and saw it. And the uh, first house I went and looked at, uh, it didn't work out. It was like a shared dock easement. It was too shallow at the end of the cove, whatever. Second house was about to, the realtor sent me. It's going to come on the market that coming Friday. They're going to take offers on Sunday. And uh, so she went and saw it, sent me a video. And um, rewind, my wife had actually, this is funny. My wife, a few weeks prior, had... Uh, went to Asheville actually uh, with her parents and took one of our kids there. And they just like three days kind of seeing all the whatever there's to see in, in Asheville. And she comes back and she says, Jim, she says, people in Asheville or in North Carolina are so nice. It's so beautiful. We really need to get the lake house in North Carolina one of these days. 
one of these days. I took that as like ASAP, right? And so Jimmy goes to work <laughs> trying to buy. So I go, it's a Sunday morning, right? So it's coming soon on Friday, review offers on Sunday. Sunday morning, the realtor is texting me. I look at the pictures. We're sitting at the uh, breakfast table. I said, oh, Marina, I said, here's the, uh, uh, here's the, the, the house we're gonna, I'm going to make an offer on. And she's like, wait, are you just going to make an offer on it? So what, what, are you, what are you talking about? Like, you're going to flip it? I thought you only flipped houses in Pennsylvania. Like, what, what do you mean? I said, no, no. Remember you said you wanted a lake out of North Carolina. I think I found a good deal. Like, it's worth like 1.5. We're buying a friend. I'm going to buy for 1.1. It's going to be a good deal. She's like, all right. And then they get the thing accepted. I sent a $30,000. Get my offer accepted. I sent a $30,000 wire. And um, and then she's like, wasn't thrilled. She's like, Jim, hold, hold, hold the horses. She's like, I was picturing this romantic weekend getaway. You and I go house shopping by boat. And you just went and got this thing. And here I am thinking I'm like her savior. And turns out I'm in trouble. And I was so confused. <laughs> Don't you know your wife wants to do two things? Number one, she wants to go shopping with you. And number two, she wants to talk about it. Right. Well, Jay, you've been married a lot longer than I have. And so I'm, I've got a lot to learn. So anyway... <laughs> We uh, we worked through that. She's like, well, how are you going to pay for it? Because you ain't using our money to pay for it. And uh, I was like, I'll figure it out. She's like, well, how long do you have to close? I said, you know, 29 days. And she's like, well, you better figure it out. So um, I, uh, one of my hard money lender that I use, um, they actually they do business in North Carolina as well. So that took care of, you know, 80% of the cost. All right. But still had to come up, you know, everything. I need a few hundred thousand bucks, maybe 350. Oh, just a few hundred. Yeah, just a few. And um, so I thought, you know, how am I going to do this? And, you know, Scott, I've got a, a self-storage facility looking to buy more. And so, you know, how like, people syndicate those deals. They get the, the bank loan. They raise investors for the, for the equity need of the down payment. I was like, why don't I do the same thing? And I didn't come up with that. I heard somebody else doing it. Why don't I do the same thing for this? And so here's what I came up with. And I'm going to tell you the structure. And then I'm going to tell you how I went about raising the money uh, All right. to do it. Um so I was like, you know, this has got to be different. I just got like, it's got to be sweet enough to attract um, like people like you and me, a little more sophisticated investors, not just armchair investors, right? Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, the way I structured it was I created a, a new LLC um, just for that property. So the only thing it owns, Lake Norman Paradise. I thought it was a good name. Love so I uh, created a new LLC and in exchange for $115,000, I give the investor 10% ownership of the LLC. 6% 6 preferred return and uh, two weeks at the lake house free each year, one peak season, one off peak. And um, all of the bonus depreciation we're taking in year one, I'm splitting it equally amongst those three investors. Mm. So if they're a real estate professional, it drives their IRR through the roof and um, three year commitment. And uh, it's, well, that's, that's enough detail, but that's how I structured it. And is instead of having a bunch of one-on-one -on -one conversations, I recorded like a, a video, like a loom video of me going through a slide deck and walking through the deal. And I was, I spent like two and a half hours one morning going through the cell phone and uh, put it out on Facebook once. And um, instead of having to schedule times to meet with people, I just send the loom video link. I never did have a conversation with anybody about it. And, and what I kind of link was that? that? What kind of link? Loom, L-O-O-M. And so what that is, it's a, you can go to loom.com and you can record your screen and it records your audio over it. So it's really cool. Yeah. So recorded a presentation. So you, you did this video. Um, what were they seeing on them? I mean, you weren't doing the video at the house. No. So I was doing a video of my slide deck presentation, right? So I had some pictures of the house. So, you know, of course, the about Lake Norman, the the math of the deal, right? Uh, the analyzing uh, of the of the numbers on the deal and what's in it for them, how they're going to get paid back and how much they're going to they're going to make and how they're going to enjoy those two weeks per year. By the way, you know, if you can't make it two weeks every year, you can give your week, one or both your weeks to your friends. Imagine the baller status you've got if you give away a lake, uh, a free week at a lake house. So. Oh, man, you did the Colombo close in the middle of your video, which was, oh, by the way. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That's all. So how much money, how much private money did you raise on for that deal? Yeah, so one was uh, one of the so I took three people at one fifteen each. Uh, one of them was an existing private lender, so it's it's fair to say he just reallocated money, right? And then um, I raised two new investors uh, who had, one had heard about it word of mouth, and one saw a Facebook post. But the person who heard about it word of mouth was from somebody I reached out to, right? From uh, from texting. 
So you actually got one of those private lenders from your Facebook post and the link to that video that you did on Loom? So uh, the Facebook post, you want to be careful, make sure it's an existing relationship before I ask for money or I want to be compliant. And I said, listen, there's a lake house. You know, here's some pictures. Um, If you'd like to talk about getting involved, uh, if you're looking for a good place to put 115,000 bucks, you shoot me a message. Let's have a conversation about it. And Mm -hmm. uh, one of the guys who reached out to me was somebody who worked for me several years ago, lives in North Carolina. And um, I was like, I hadn't thought of this guy in four years. Um, and But he's a great guy. I watched the video. And the next day, he's like, all right, we're in. I'm like, I, I still haven't talked to him on the phone. Like, we text. He watched the video, but I never talked to him. It was, uh, it was really cool. I love it. Now, I want to go back to the very beginning of your story. There's okay. something you told at the beginning of your story that I don't want anyone to miss. And here's what you told. You were visiting with a friend down in Florida and your friend was visiting with you about your goals. Mm -hmm. And he says, what are your goals, Jim? And your friend told you, well, they need more clarity. And then you wrote your specific goal down. And then here's what I heard you say. You were reviewing your goal, reviewing your goal. And then it occurred to you that you ha- you weren't doing anything with your goal. And then you started searching on the internet. Here's my question. If you had not written down that goal, what do you think the chances would have, and you, and you hadn't been reviewing it, what do you think the chances would have been that you would have just remembered that's something you wanted to do and you went to the internet to search? I mean, it, it wouldn't have happened. It would still be the same back burner goal it had been for the previous four years, right? Um, it just, it wouldn't have happened. And so writing it down and how often, how often, you know, were you reviewing that goal or reviewing your goals to where it was like top of mind awareness? I mean, I was writing down the same list of goals like every day for a while. Then it was like once or twice a week and I did it again today and I was able to you know, stop writing a couple of them off because we, we hit them. But, uh, you know, I write them down consistently a couple times. A how week. many, how many goals do you have written down right now for that you're working towards? For the year. And I want to know how many of them you've checked off for the year. Yeah, I think it was 18 and I've checked off two. And these weren't, these are like five year goals. These are not this year goals. Sure. Right? Sure. Um, there are 18 of them. Some are relationally, some are, you know, financial, some are business. And sometimes they change. And I think sometimes for me, like I get stuck down a path and I feel guilty changing the goal, right? I made a change in my residential business recently. And, um, and I was like, we got to be willing to change the goals. But I think like, having clarity and focus is the important part. Absolutely. Jim, I briefly mentioned it to you before the show started, but I've got to just share it now. I'm so excited about the brand new private money guide that I just finished writing. And this private money guide is called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. And it's free. You can download it for free. This will put you and anyone on the fast track to private money. You can download it for free at jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Again, that's download your private money guide at www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Jim, I got another question for you before we wrap up the show. And that is, you know, when you were telling your story about reaching out to these people that, you know, you know, it sounds to me like, well, I'm not going to put that in your brain. I'm just going to ask you the question. When it comes to the to your own experience mm-hmm. with private money and, and getting it for your deals, I'm not hard. I'm not talking about hard money. I know you, I know you use hard money for your big deals as well, but the private money from individuals has most of that private money come from people that you taught about private money and you had some type of relationship with, or did most of that private money from individuals say come from existing private lenders that were already loaning money out? Not a, not a single one ever lent money uh, to a, on a real estate deal prior to investing with me. And you know what? My, my experience is exactly the same. Of all my 44 private lenders, none of them had ever heard of private money, private lending. None of them had ever heard of self-directed IRAs. In fact, over half of my private lenders 
ha- are using their retirement funds to invest in our deals. They never heard of self-directed IRAs until I taught them about it. And so since you have had the same experience and I've had the same experience as you, as far as where these private lenders are coming from, what lessons, what takeaway does that really bring to mind to you if someone is really going to raise private money um, from individuals? I think the takeaway is you already know the people who are going to supply your first, you know, at least a few million dollars of private money. And they're right here in your cell phone, right? That's where they're located. You already know them. And um, I just, like, like I said before, I've, I've yet to have somebody be offended or upset that I, I asked them their opinion on, on a, on the structure or if they would mind helping me. Like, I've never had somebody offended by that. And I, I like you, Jay, I, I do sometimes ask if they would like to, to, to learn more about, you know, my, I'll actually ask for the money um, instead of asking just for help sometimes. And again, nobody's ever offended. It's like, no, I don't have it, but thanks for thinking of me. It's like, cool. You're welcome. Uh, Absolutely. So my, I, yeah. I mean, it's like, and here's the deal, you know, here's an interesting number that you may have heard or may not have heard. I just learned it three months ago and I learned it from quest. So all of my private lenders transferred, I mean, those that are using retirement funds, mm-hmm. transferred their funds over to Quest Trust out of Houston, Texas. And that's where they loan the money from. For those of my lenders that are using retirement funds. But, you know, in my experience, like we were saying, none of them had ever heard of private money. Never, uh, they had never heard about self directed IRAs. And this figure that I heard from Quest Trust uh, three months ago, prior to COVID coming along, there was $18 trillion in liquid capital just sitting in retirement accounts, not including just liquid capital, but just unbelievable. Just in, in retirement accounts in the US. On this side of COVID, $31 trillion in cash just sitting on the sidelines. And so, what's the lesson to learn from that? The private lenders need and want us, real estate investors and borrowers, more than we need them. Now, it's a win-win scenario, but here's the deal. There's more money out there available than we can use, right? Yes. And so, like like you just said, when we come along and we teach someone about what private money and private lending is, we have done them a huge favor and we have been a servant to them. I mean, you know, and I know you've heard me say it uh, over the past years, um, Jim, but, you know, particularly our older, uh, retired uh, private lenders, they have written us thank you notes for changing their retirement years by giving them high rates of return safely and securely. And they're able to travel. They're able to go visit grandkids when ordinarily they wouldn't be able to unless they were doing business with us. So, you know, it's just wonderful to be be able to have a win-win a uh, relationship to where everybody wins. You know, my dad taught me a long time ago, unless everybody's winning, then Ain't you know we don't want to be involved in it. Yeah. I like Jim, it. my lands, you are amazing. You're an amazing friend. You're an amazing entrepreneur and business guy. And the empire that you've put up, put together over all these years is just remarkable. Um, I want to ask your advice. Uh, first of all, when I say empire and remarkable, just share real quick what your business looks like today. Like how many deals over the last two or three years have you been doing like, you know, a year? Sure. So I think last year we did 187 houses. That's uh, some of them we bought, uh, fixed and sold. Some of them we wholesaled. Uh, in the last three and a half years, we've acquired like 141 rental properties that, we've, that we're keeping. Um, and, uh, so we, you know, wholesale, we'll, we'll do about 200 houses again this year for either wholesales and fix and flips. Um, not looking to buy rentals aggressively, probably just like one a month or so as, as they come up, I don't care if I ever buy another rental property, 140 something's enough. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, we stay busy. We stay, I think we have, um, 73 houses in our pipeline right now, either stuff we're about to buy under construction or, or about to sell. Uh, that includes about 20 wholesales that are uh, under contract with buyers. So it's, we stay busy. Phenomenal, man. Yeah. Phenomenal. Right. So um, one last question. What is the best advice 
from your experience that would you that you would give to someone that's looking to start raising private money that hasn't raised private money before? Sure. So uh, first thing you got to do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to do when I got this call is uh, download that money guide. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Next, I'm, I'm just going to assume anybody listening to this is already fully engaged in your world and all that you have to offer. Uh, Jay, if that's not the case, then that's your first thing. Um, but uh, if that's not the first, if, if you've already done that, um, I think the people ask me a lot of times, like, what's one thing, piece of advice you have, right? And assuming they're already in the right path for uh, education, like they're following you for how to raise private money. Um, I, that's one thing I look to do more all the time. That is just find the thing I'm afraid of doing and do it, right? Embrace fear and do the hard thing and do it sooner. And it's amazing how much easier your life gets. That's it. Awesome, man. So Jim. Yes. Someone may want to continue the conversation with you about investing in your business. I mean, you've got millions and millions. How many millions in private money did you say you've been working with? We're I think we're 21 right now. 21 million. Mm -hmm. So uh, someone may want to invest with you to get high rates of return that you're paying everybody. Um, so how can someone connect with you? Sure. So I'm a pretty unsophisticated guy here. You can reach out to me on Facebook. I think it's showing in the video right now, facebook.com forward slash Jim Zaspel. That's my first and last name, Jim Zaspel. Uh, I used to say I'm, I'm one in a million right now. I'm like one in a billion people on Facebook, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and, and, and I want to make sure that, um, you know, we know how to spell that. So on Facebook, uh, Jim Zaspel, all one word, J-I-M-Z, a S P E L Jim Zaspel. Thank you. Or you can give me a call or shoot me a text um, on my cell number. It's right there on the screen. It's 267 577 1072. Jim, you're actually giving out your cell phone number. Are you like a real person or something? I'm a, I'm a real person <laughs> or something, you know? I don't have a I don't have a funnel. I don't have a sales floor for, for the stuff. It's just just me. All right. Give give out your number again since you've spilled the beans. Sure. 267 577 1072. Shoot me a call or a text and we'll figure out a time to a time to connect. But, uh, you know, Jay, I just want to say again, like I, I guarantee you, and I know for a fact, um, you know, I would have been having a lot harder road to hoe, tougher road to hoe, I think the expression is, uh, for raising private money if I hadn't you know, learned from you along the way. So, uh, folks, if you're if you're listening to Jay Connor, you're in his world, then you're in the right place. So Jim. appreciate all that I learned from you, Jay. Thank you so much. And uh, what an inspiration you are to me with the uh, organization that you have uh, grown and that you now manage. So, Jim, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining me on today's show here on Raising Private Money. Thank you, Jay. It's been a, it's been a blast. It's been fun. There you have it, my friend. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I really need you. Yes, I need your help. I need you to like, share, and subscribe, and give me a five-star rating and a personal review. If, and uh, in addition to that, I really would like for you to think of someone that this interview could inspire, could give value to, and share this episode with your friend or your family member. So thank you for joining me here on the show. I look forward to seeing you right here next time on Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.